Greetings once again. My name is Amuna Yisrael. This is Solonomics 101. It's been a while since I have come to you with a video such as this. So, um, in the spirit of the fact that it's almost over Black History Month, in quotations, um, I had something that I always had a question of, especially with the whole controversy with Stacey Daz and cooning and all this stuff. And I always wanted to know what in the world was a coon. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit, I didn't grow up with these pejorative terms. So I'm like a child when it comes to like, what's that? I heard of it and I heard what people think it is, but I wanted to know a little bit more about it. So my, my immediate search just brought me to zip coon. And at first I wanted to do a video with that, but to me it wasn't satisfactory. So I put it down and I continue to just do my normal reading studies on the transatlantic slave trade, the whole thing concerning slavery, right? In the middle of me studying, boop, I found some information of which I wanted to share with you today with a little bit extra. So this is Imuna Yisrael coming to you with, I'm coming to you with coon history day. This is what I found out about coon history. All right, so if you go on a quick search on etymology online dictionary or online etymology dictionary, you'll see two possible origins for the word coon. One is in the 1700s with the Whig Party, the U.S. and raccoons, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really buy that one. This one, the insulting um, term or pejorative term, meaning a quote, unquote, black person uh, coming from the word barracos in Portuguese or barracoons. Um, and this is what they would use. It's a building constructed to hold slaves for sale. And so on the side of the Atlantic, when they first procured or stole the slaves from Africa or legally trafficked, they would put them in these barracoons. So I have a quick picture. So now it started to make sense when I was reading. I'm like, okay, barracoons, coons in barracoons. So these would be coons in barracoons, a.k.a. slaves. This is also a picture of um, one of the movies. Uh, I'm sorry, what's the name of the movie again? Book of Negroes. So, as the slaves come down to feed her from the inland country, they are put into a booth or a prison built for that purpose near the beach, all of them together, when the Europeans are to receive them. This was written by French enslavist uh, John Barbo, and you can check out his memoir to learn more about, and I basically picked this because that's exactly what he's describing. He's describing barracoons, what they look like, and if you go on to read it, he says that the surgeons, they will bring them out of there, and the surgeons will take a look at them, um, they will be naked, you know, and he's telling you about the conditions of what was happening. This is offered also the book of Negroes, and it was, it was picked so that you can illustrate and see, we've seen it in slave movies, but that's what it looks like. This is also from um, the book Kwame, The Last Slave of West Africa. And if you jump down to the bottom, you also see he says European agents who kept slaves in barracoons, a place where slaves were reduced to intensity, in intensity and efficiency. And so basically, those are three different references, and I'm quite sure you can find more to see that it was a word, a loan word. Um, from the Portuguese and the Spanish, barracoons and barracoons, uh, and by the way, those are the majority ones who were in it. So let's fast forward. Coon songs. I thought this was wild. Coon songs, as again, now you're on the other side of the Atlantic, during the minstrelly shows, everyone was a coon. It says the coffee-colored coon. This one is every race has a flag but a coon. I heard that this was a very popular song, so much so that it sparked the president of the UNIA, Marcus Garvey, to write this concerning this song. He says, the song motivated the creation of Pan-African flag in the 1920s. Marcus Garvey is quoted by saying, show me the race or the nation without a flag, and I will show you a race of people without any pride. I, in song and mimicry, they have said every race has a flag but the coon. You see that? But he's saying that they can't say it anymore. It may have been true, but not anymore. So these coon songs, to my understanding, over 600 of them, it was a boom for the coon songs. So much so that, you know, Marcus Garvey and those with him made that flag. Here we have more evidence, the golf crazy coons. So it didn't matter that you was just dancing for master. Everyone was a coon. It says, here goes the sheet music for this. They said this was a hit song. Coon, coon, coon was a hit song in 1991. Coon, coon, coon. Okay. When Sosa comes to Coon Town. Possum Pie or the Strutting Coon. It's not just Zip Coon. That was just one of the Coon songs. Hey, I don't want no yellow coon. It didn't matter. So today I see us 
I'll go into that in a little bit. But we, we all coons look alike to me. This man, Ernest Hogan, this song was a hit. All coons look alike. And here's your hit maker, Ernest Hogan. So there you have it. That is my Coon History Day contribution for the origins of the word coon, where that pejorative term originated from, possibly according to what the sources are revealing, and the fact that you didn't have to be a special type of coon. Like, a coon was just a slave, a.k.a. a black person. So when we're calling one another coons all day long, understand that you're also implicating yourself according to the European a power structure. They're laughing at you, laughing at each other, because the reality is, in their mind, you're all coons. So um, until next time, my name is Amuna Yisrael. This has been rather interesting because I couldn't find it nowhere. I was all over YouTube and all over the internet, and I really had to dig for this one, but I'm glad that I was able to share it with you. So until next time, one.